Our jobs as educators is changing. It used to be about teaching a class of kids what we knew and trying to inspire them to academic success. And when we could, we would make connections to quote-unquote real life. Well, today, virtually everything that we know is available with the click of a button. Now, if you've been around a while like I have, you'll remember when we struggled for access to technology. We all wanted more access to innovative ways to engage students. Well, those days are here. Kids have in their pockets powerful devices that can take notes and perform calculations and take pictures and record videos. It offers instant access to the wisdom of the world and lets us share and communicate with virtually anyone in the world instantaneously. So the old content delivery model is no longer relevant in a world of instant access to information. A student's learning needs are very different today from what they were at the turn of the century. That's why our jobs are changing. And that's why the curriculum has to change. Now don't get me wrong, we still need literacy and numeracy and an understanding of the way the world works. But the way we achieve that can happen differently. It has to happen differently. Learning can't just happen in schools and it can't just come from a teacher. So our roles as educators are shifting away from content specialists to learning experts. We focus less on what to learn and more on how to learn. Now the phrase lifelong learning is almost a cliche now. It's often said, but we rarely unpack it. But lifelong learning is central to 21st century education. It's about being able to make sense of a complex and rapidly changing world. It's about developing skills with systems and technologies that haven't even been invented yet. It's having the wherewithal to collaborate on innovative approaches to challenging issues. So what does that look like for us as educators? Well, we shift the focus. We make learning real and we make learning meaningful and we individualize the content for every student. Now that sounds awfully tough, but it's less complicated than it sounds. When we start with the learner's interest, and help them identify opportunities and challenges in that area, then that becomes the student's own unique content focus. Next, we find others who are interested in the same thing, not just within the school, but around the world. The learner, with the educator's guidance, assembles a professional learning community from journal authors and magazines and blogs and podcasters and discussion boards and hashtags, professionals and agencies and so on. That learning community is now the content expert and our learner will become a contributing member of that community. The value of a learner's work is more than just a point of assessment. Their work extends far beyond the classroom as an essential part of a global dialogue on real issues. It gives the learner a global audience for their learning process and the product of their efforts. Now, taking on real problems and opportunities with an interested community of experts that reflects the student's own interest is highly motivating. The learners themselves begin to identify the skills that they need to pursue the interests that they have. As learning experts, this is where we fit in the core content. We work with the learners to develop the needed literacy and numeracy skills to come to a more sophisticated understanding of the way the world works and to cultivate effective communication and collaboration skills, their capacity for critical and creative thinking and appropriate use of available technology. As before, that knowledge content will be pretty similar for everyone, but it's uniquely applied by each individual learner to their own learning context. With student projects, learning becomes a design challenge where we come to understand single issues as products of larger systems. We have to take on the full complexity of the world and look for answers using our skills and knowledge, not in separate content silos, but as an integrated whole. The educator's instructional focus then shifts from what to learn to how to learn. Explicit instruction in collaboration and communication, in critical thinking, in processes that evoke creative responses, in habits of reflection and self-evaluation, in the practice of mindful awareness of their own thought processes. These skills enable the learner to apply the content knowledge to bring about positive change. Now, ongoing and frequent feedback on the formation of skills is critical to such self-directed learning. 21st century learners will create their own reflections on not just the content learning, but also the processes used to acquire it. They'll reflect on the quality of a finished product, but also the effectiveness of the steps taken to create it. They'll reflect on pieces of knowledge and how the pieces interact with each other. And they'll reflect on their independence as a learner, as well as their capacity for working with collaborators whose diverse ideas and worldviews challenge their own thought processes. Now, these habits of reflection build an awareness of their own learning processes. Assessing growth and skill achievement happens in the context of their work rather than as an isolated test. 
Assessment is a matter of analyzing the characteristics of the learner's product over time. Now this is a practice in which the learner is the key assessor and the educator's feedback is both on the product and the quality of the learner's reflective observations. It's feedback on what they learned as well as how they learned it. Education in the 21st century situates learning in authentic contexts where learners contribute actual solutions to real problems. The search for solutions is the motivation for acquiring literacy, numeracy, and scientific thinking and global understanding. And the reflective habits of mind develop independence and encourage lifelong improvement. Students come away from formal education experience with the ability to engage with others and to communicate effectively using a variety of media. They can recognize and make sense of complex global challenges. They acquire the ability to manage themselves, their work, and their future learning needs with a heightened sense of control over their own thinking processes. These are 21st century learning outcomes. These are the life skills needed to adapt in a changing world. Now there's no single right way to do this. But there are a lot of frameworks to help you get started. Collaborative learning, for example, and project-based learning and inquiry will help you set up self-determined learning experiences for your students. And a little research into self-regulation and metacognition will help you frame the thinking and engagement pieces.